Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruth and John. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1952, Part 72. Lacey Woods Lodge, Glen Lake, Michigan, August 1952. <clears throat> Dearest Mother, this has really been a wonderful vacation. It seems so long ago that we left Cleveland for our 2,200-mile trip up to Montreal, Quebec, St. Anne du Pre, Ottawa, and the Pennsylvania Hills and Michigan. The past week has been full of boating, swimming, fishing, picnics, and eating. John's family really excel in cooking, and the meals have been marvelous. I might say that I definitely look six months pregnant. I felt I was going to burst, but everything tastes so good. Poor Johnny has a very bad sunburn and is in bed today. We took a five-hour boat trip down the Platte River to Lake Michigan, and John sat from 10.30 to 3.30 in the hot sun in trunks, plus the trip back, which was about an hour, so he really burned his legs badly. However, he kept going, played a marvelous game of golf on a magnificently beautiful course near here the next day, and chopped wood yesterday, but he's been limping so badly, and today his legs are swollen. Hope he feels better by tomorrow as we plan to leave. I couldn't begin to, to describe how lovely it is here and Helen's lovely cabin surrounded by white birches and a beautiful view over Glen Lake from her picture window. I am now riding on a bench with the water lapping at my, my feet by the dock. We haven't had much luck fishing, though. Only one fish dinner caught by Ted and Evelyn. The trip down the Platte River to Lake Michigan was really unusual. We drifted down the river most of the way. I even rowed the last part. We could watch the bottom of the river most of the time. It was so clear, almost like Silver Springs in Florida. When we reached the bench at Lake Michigan, a man towed about six boats back with his motor launch. Last night, they took a ride up on the huge sand dunes, too rugged for me, after our beach party. All in all, having a very busy and wonderful holiday. We'll look for a letter when we get home. Love, John and Ruth. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio. August 13th, 1952. Dear folks, so nice to get your letter the day after we got back. We had a good trip. John's dad drove back to Sandusky, and Dick drove most of the way to Cleveland. John's legs started getting better so that by yesterday he could go to court. He certainly looks wonderful with his tan, but hope he doesn't overdo it again. He se we seem to be back on our busy schedule again. Dick stayed with us Sunday night and for supper Monday, and Bruce and Jer came down with the two kitties for supper last night, a, re a real three-ring circus. They finally put Eric in the car to sleep, and Heather put the finishing touches on the evening by pouring Evening in Paris talcum all over the dresser and bedroom. Some fun. I went to the doctor yesterday, and he predicts a boy. Said the other doctor was kidding me because the heartbeat is slow, 120. He didn't think we'd get the twins John wants. I gained 7 pounds this time, and I'm now 135. 21 pounds gained so far. Tonight is the dentist, and tomorrow night John plays golf with Shintu and Jim, and then supper here. Shintu leaves for India via Norway on Friday. Anne and Wayne Duff are coming up Saturday, and we're planning a weekend in Pennsylvania with them the following weekend. Then the next weekend is Labor Day, and we'll go down Friday to Lakeside, Ohio, for John's family reunion. I'm so glad John and I went away for a vacation. We went 2,700 miles, and I feel fine, so very pleased. Chris and Isabel and Bev must have enjoyed their visits with you. Very nice. What was Isabel's gift? We had a card from Connie in Michigan. First word since about March. Hope she finds her future in England. Sorry she didn't stop by here. 
Very glad to hear Bud is studying. We wish him luck. Glad Doris and he are still a duo. How long does he have to go in his course? The weather's lovely and the flowers are nice. It's a good life. Lot, lots of love, John and Ruth. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, August 27th, 1952. Dear folks, Certainly want to thank you all for your nice letters and anniversary card. Rather than just recreating the joy of our wedding day as your card's verse suggested, I'm a thousand times happier. Every day is nicer than the last. We had a very nice anniversary, had a roast and banana cake, and went to the movie Scaramouche. I clipped a coupon from the newspaper, and we both got in for 39 cents, a bargain. John gave me a three-year subscription to the American Home magazine. I just devour that type of magazine now, and he's been bringing me one when I've been ill or just on different occasions, so I really appreciate it. John's family sent us nice cards and $10, which helped finance our very nice weekend in Pennsylvania with Ann and Wayne Duff. Our first week back from Glen Lake, we had guests for dinner five nights out of seven. John's dad took Dick, John, and me to a double header a week ago Sunday. Very good seats, and we saw the Cleveland Indians win both. Good games. After, Dick and Mr. Ray came back for lunch. We had potato salad, baked beans, and ham sandwiches. John's dad said it was tasty, appetizing. And on the card with the $10 said, Thanks again for the swell lunch. I wonder if that kind of meal would get the same reception with Dad. I think that's why I've begun to like cooking so much. It gets such a wonderful, appreciative reception here. I broke open a double-yoked egg at breakfast today, and John is sure it means twins. We went to Pennsylvania Friday night with Ann and Wayne, stayed at the Beachcomber on Lake Erie, and went dancing at the hotel that night. We had two little cottages on the lake. Saturday, we all played 18 holes of golf and did very well. We had a wonderful dinner Saturday night and got a lot of sun Sunday. The fellows went swimming and I just paddled. All told, it was a wonderful time and we leave Friday night for Lakeside and another beach weekend with John's family. Lots of holidays this summer. Very nice. We certainly seem to keep very busy. Last night, John and Alex played golf and then came back for lunch. Then we moved Dick to the co-op. He's staying in Cleveland and working and going to university here, working on his master's degree in English. He'd like to either teach college English or get into the publishing field editing books. Very glad to hear of all your activities, bud, and hope the new, the new merging at work will be beneficial to you. I only hope that when you're married, you'll be as happy as I've been. John deserves the credit as far as we're concerned for being so considerate, unselfish, kind, never losing his temper. All the things that make for happiness and which I never knew men were capable of. I'm sure you'll have to work at it but it will be worth it. Anne and I have decided that our sons, if any for us, will share the work with the girls, do the dishes, etc., because there's certainly nothing feminine about doing dishes, and it's certainly wonderful for a wife to get a husband that doesn't mind helping out. Both John and his dad are so good in that respect, and there's nothing nicer than when you've worked hard over a meal to find real appreciation in a husband that takes over. John and his dad are both experts at whipping up and seasoning and putting cream into the mashed potatoes, all of which makes it a joint effort. Money can be a big problem when you're both used to spending your own, but if you sit down and know where it's all going, it helps. John writes the checks for the bills, and then I have an allowance for groceries and myself, and he has his for lunches and the car. When I worked, my check went into the savings account, and some of John's when possible. I have to go now to the dentist. Two old fillings have to come out, and he wants to put in gold inlays. Fifty dollars for three. Ow! 
I've started my mother's class and start on my lay at things tomorrow. John's father's class starts soon, too. We hope to become prepared parents. Bye now. Love, John and Ruth. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, September 9th, 1952. Dear Mother, It's just amazing where the time seems to go. There always seems so much to do even now when I have all the time in the world. We had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. We left Friday after work. John had to go to court in Strongsville at 8 o'clock p.m., so he did that on the way and got to Lakeside about 11 o'clock p.m. Almost half of John's grandparents' family were there at one time or another. We all stayed in two huge houses and cooked and ate together, taking turns. It's always such a pleasant weekend. John's grandparents have been going there every Labor Day since before they were married, and they'll have their 62nd wedding anniversary next week. I'll try to remember who all did come. Several families were absent. About 24 out of 45 came. Grandma and Grandpa Zook, children John and John and Nell, Mrs. Ray, Mrs. Ray and Mr. Ray, Aunt Mary and Frank, Lenore and Dale, the grandchildren, Marshall and Katie, George Ann, John and me, Dick, Carol, Harold and Marge, and Barbara, and the great-grandchildren, Linda, Terry, Debbie, and Michael. Tommy and family are in California, and Rachel and family in Michigan. Ted in Cleveland, and Fred and family in Sandusky. Another Johnny in, in Colorado, the Lacey's in Michigan, too. We had a very merry time, though, and John went swimming every day and played golf. We played poker several times. They stayed up till 4 o'clock a.m. Saturday. I gave out earlier, winning 82 cents, which I later lost, and John won about $5, which he managed to sustain. We also played several games of anagrams with Grandpa, and John came out a winner there, too. We came back Monday night, stopping at Sandusky. Carol had a pretty white linen duster coat, which Mrs. Ray dyed a lovely pale green for me, and she's cutting it off to make a jacket length. Very nice of her. She's also making a white silk quilted bunting for the baby, and Carol is knitting a cute diamond front sweater in pale blue. I've had several of my classes for expectant mothers and really enjoying them. I've started quite a few things for my layette, and making kimonos, sacks, and wrapping blankets in flannelette, pale green, yellow, and white right now. The other night I had some cramps, probably something I ate, and thought of all I had to do, and was wondering if I could teach John how to finish them in case the baby came premature. The next day I told him about it, and he suggested I get on the ball and finish them myself as he'd draw the line at sewing. My natural childbirth classes start next Saturday. I've read a couple of books about it, and they seem to feel that fear causes the pain and makes contractions worse, and that if you can relax at the proper time and work at the proper time, it helps. You realize it's a big job to be faced with courage and reward. It gives you the three stages and what to expect. My doctor seems to feel that it's an educational approach And the more you understand what's going on, the better you are. I believe they always have an episiotomy as a matter of course in the Cleveland hospitals. And the doctor says he'll give me anesthetic if I want it or if he thinks I need it. He says I'm in good shape, blood pressure, and I've gained 25 pounds. They usually limit to 20, but I don't don't look like I've gained that much. He still says it sounds boyish. I've got one of my three gold inlays in my teeth, two to go, at $20 each. The dentist feels that if I'd had gold originally, they wouldn't have gone bad around them like the silver. These should last a while. We were down to Akron Saturday to Ann and Wayne's party. Joan is expecting in March, which makes it just about unanimous among our friends now, Ann, Dale, Ada, Mary, Joan, and I. We house-hunted after church Sunday. 
a very weary and discouraging, discouraging job, or am I too fussy? Guess I just won a $30,000 house for about $14,000 and impossible buy. The first day of school seems strange. The first time in 22 years I haven't gone to school in September. Miss Kent and Miss Bayes picked me up coming from the store. Miss Kent and Barbara told her mother she knew she knew I would have a baby in November, but in December I would come back to school. I had a cute letter from Susie this morning. Miss Bender came by. She's working on her doctor's degree, too, now. She got the only A given the, in the psychoanalysis course she took last spring and hopes she doesn't believe in it. And she doesn't believe in it. Grandma wrote and invited us to her birthday dinner. Hope you have a wonderful time. What did Viv have? Grandma had expected you down Labor Day. Why didn't you go there if the roads were too bad to Star City? Too bad you were alone Labor Day. Have you ever thought of people like Miss Kent and Miss Bender and Rose? Never married, no children, Mrs. Hayton divorced, Mrs. Davis widowed. I hope that I'll be able to raise my family without teaching, but someday I plan to return, maybe in 25 years. I think activity and purpose in life is good for a person. Mrs. Ray does volunteer work at the hospital, answering the phone and and admitting visitors. It seems to me that Christianity was meant to be an active, not a passive thing, and there seems to be so many things in the world to be done. It's easier for me to talk about it, I guess. One of John's aunts had a very unhappy marriage. Her husband was always away and left her alone. She's a wonderful person, and it was a tragedy. Her daughter is a teacher never married, so quite a companion for her, and she's been very active in a number of organizations, and so, has, and so has quite occupied her life. This spring, he became quite ill and on the verge of death, I guess. It's been quite interesting, the change in him. He's home all the time, goes everywhere with her now, and the funny thing is that she finds it hard to adjust. He wants her to quit her clubs and spend time with him. From what I gather, she still keeps her activities, though. I feel very fortunate that John is such a good husband. I'll probably be seeing less of him this winter, though, for he's joining the Junior Chamber of Commerce and their bowling league. Then, too, he works fairly late, but it's all in a good cause. I hope that by waiting on Bud so much that you haven't spoiled him for whomever he marries... As I recall, he takes meals pretty much for granted and never does the dishes. It's too bad. I was always under the impression that Grandma's birthday was September 30th, and now she tells us she'll be 80 on the 27th. I must write to her. Grandma Zook will be 82 on the the 30th. John's mother's birthday is the 23rd. I may have told you this, so forgive me if I start repeating. I guess I have mentioned that German measles early in pregnancy is one cause of deafness. Also brain damage, heart disease, and bad eyes. It seems that I wrote about the case in my last letter, if not tell me, and I will, that it's a legal cause for abortion in Ohio. I enjoyed the picture of you and Joyce. She's not nearly so attractive as Doris, though. Nice girl, I expect, but dresses too old and wears her hair too severe for her age and type. I'm glad you've enjoyed the suit. I hate to ask you, but would you mail the navy sheer blouse to me right away? Just a small parcel. You see, Jer loaned me a navy suit maternity, and I have a yellow sleeveless jacket that is fine for now, but on cooler days the navy blouse would be a good idea under it. I think I've worn the blouse about the same number of times as I borrowed it, so I should apologize, but I'll return it again in November. Just eight weeks to go. It hardly seems possible the time has gone so quickly. A person really needs nine months to get ready. John assures me that if I take, that if it takes after me, it will be late. On second thought, he says maybe it'll be on time, like I, wa- I was for our wedding. Good night now. Take care of yourself. Love, John and Ruth. P.S. Excuse the preaching. Guess I missed teaching. R.R. 
to be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history, if this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made 595 history videos in seven areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.